Hello there, and how are you doing? Oh, you're doing that good? Well, I am so glad to hear it. Are you glad to hear that they're doing that well? Absolutely. And we are also. Now, since he's been here, of course, he's had to be in quarantine since he arrived. And you know what? They actually call every day to check that he is still here in quarantine and not playing somewhere but then again they do not know what we have we have Ryanair 186 and we can escape and go anywhere in the world that we want right yes sure and we have been having fun the only thing is when he left Italy he left 33 and 34 degrees Celsius and that was about 92 90 to 94 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, today, the temperature in England is, uh, <clears throat> is about 14 degrees or 57 degrees Fahrenheit. Mm. But we expect a high of sizzling temperatures of 16 <laughs> or 60 degrees Fahrenheit. That should be our high today. There is some blue sky overhead, but it's supposed to be cloudy and perhaps with a little rain. But Italy, you left 33 and 34 degrees. Yes, I live. 34 degrees in England. So you prefer 33, 34, or do you prefer the 16 of England? Definitely, yes. I prefer 34. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, let's give you a little shock for the system because we had a request from Melissa Hollibau, who lives in New Zealand. She wrote that she is studying for her private and remote pilot license. How about that? Oh, it's interesting. What? What's the remote ah, pilot license? That's a good question. A remote pilot license means that you can control a drone. You know what a drone is? Oh yeah, I have someone. Right, well apparently in New Zealand you need to have a pilot's license of some form. Even in, in Europe? In Europe, in Europe too? Yeah, oh. all the world. And she wrote and said that she would like to see us land at Wellington, New Zealand. So we'll be warm there? Ha, no, it's the dead of winter down there in New Zealand. We're up over and they are down under. Oh. And down under is the reverse of what we have up over. So if we are summer here, yes, 16 degrees is summer. <laughs> but down there, well, it might be about 10 degrees or a little bit less, depending. We'll have to have a look at the weather when we go onto the computer. I will put on me more clothes. More clothes would be recommended, yes. Now, she says that there are some interesting windy conditions at Wellington Airport, and she wondered whether or not P3D would actually recreate those conditions. Well, we use Active Sky. Active Sky reproduces live weather conditions. So, whatever the conditions are when we go in to start the flight, those will be the conditions that we will experience for the flight. Is that going to be all right, Melissa? I hope it's okay. Now, you didn't specify a starting point. So, we got together and we decided to pick Christchurch to start our flight from because it's just a short hop. You were interested in the landing, so we'll start at Christchurch and then see what the landing is like in Wellington. Now, we did a little research 
And we found that Jetstar flies that route with an Airbus A320. Air New Zealand also does that route, but they use a twin turboprop. So we're going to be using the, seven, uh, the A320, which is Jetstar, as that is the closest to the 737 that we have for Ryanair 186. The Jetstar is flight JQ286. So if you want to look that up, that's the route that we're going to fly. So, time to put on the coats, turn off the air conditioning, turn up the heat, and go and have a look at the weather. So, are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. So, who shall fly today? Do you want to fly? It? You it's want me your to? Turn. My turn? Oh, oh dear. My turn to fly. Well, that's going to be interesting. Make sure you have your good seat belts on tight. <laughs> we'll see what we can do. So let's go and have a look now at FlightAware and then Windy.com and let's go ahead then and make our flight plan, shall we? Well, here we are at FlightAware and we're looking at the Jetstar 286 route. Here you can see JST 286 or JQ 286 right there. Put in either one of those and it will give you this particular route. It took off from Christchurch International and landed at Wellington, the last one, which landed over 11 hours ago. Uh, it says here the taxi time was one minute for departure, but on arrival it took 16 minutes to get to the gate. Now we looked it up to see what gates they took off from and arrived at, and there were 22, stand 22 at Christchurch, and they came in to stand 22 in Wellington, so it's going to be fairly easy. Now here's the route that they took. And you can see it's pretty straightforward. I'm just going to go here now and see the altitude. Ah, they have an altitude here of 21,000. That's the flight that they actually did. But looking over here to the side, they filed an altitude flight plan of 25,000 feet, but they only did 21 for whatever reason. The actual distance is 168 nautical miles. And here, this is the route that is put into the FMC. So we have that already. Now, going to windy.com. Here we are at New Zealand Christchurch. Here we go, International Airport. What we are facing here is IFR conditions. Well, it is winter down there after all. Here you can see the winds are coming strongly from the north. Wind is 60 degrees, 9 knots, visibility 10 kilometers or more, clouds overcast at 600 feet. That's the reason for the IFR. Temperature is a sizzling nine degrees would you believe that dew point is nine oh well dew point and temperature being close together could pre present some problems but q and h is one zero one three standard having a look at the runways and here's the runways in all likelihood will probably be taking off and that is zero two well, that's, that's what we think, but let's see when we get into sim brief as to whether that's what we are given. Now let's have a look at Wellington. Here's Wellington. Here you can see the winds are still coming down from basically from the north. And here, here is the airport on that little bit of 
Oh, right in the middle of a valley with water at both ends. Yes, it will present some windy conditions, but it says it's BFR. The wind is 010 at 9 knots, visibility 10 kilometers or more, cloud scattered at 2100. So we may have a visibility problem in the approach, but we should break out. Q&H is 1016, a little bit higher pressure for Wellington. So looking at the runways, there is only one. So it looks like we'll be landing on runway 34. And there it is. There's the threshold of runway 34 at Wellington. So let's see if what we think we're going to get is actually what we'll find out in the sim brief. Here's sim brief. Ryanair we're one, and we're flight 186. We're going to depart from NZCH and we're going to arrive at NZWN. And there's the alternate airport they've given us. We are Ryanair 186. Oh, by the way, our registration airframe, E-I-E-N-I, -E is an actual Ryanair aircraft. It's about 10 years old now. But if you want to look that up, you can see all the flights that that aircraft has ever done. Profile 6, we're doing all right. Passengers, we are full. Cargo is one ton. And let's see, departure runway is 02. We thought that. And arrival is 34. Yes, we thought that one too. And looking down here, there it is. There's the same, same route that we saw on Flight Aware. Okay. Well, there's the route, so we have it all in place. So let's go on up to the top. We will save this flight. And now we go in to generate the flight plan and see what it gives us. Building everything, putting it together. Here we are. Oh, we've been given a cruise of 23,000 feet. Airtime is 37 minutes, so it's a nice short flight. That's, that's good. Block fuel is 5,920 kilograms of fuel. And it says planned optimum flight level, so that's what we'll, we'll follow. Now going down here, here's where we've got all the basic information. Here's the block fuel, 5,920. Reserves, trip and taxi. Let's have a look down here at the weather plates and see what's going on, if there's anything here. No significant weather front, but here is the weather direction for the flight at flight level 180. And here it is at pretty close to our flight level. And you can see here that the weather is coming directly crosswind for most of our trip. So, no tailwind today, not at all. And moving down, here's our profile. This, of course, up here, this dotted line, that's the troposphere. So we're well below the troposphere. So here we start out at Christchurch make our climb and then here's our long descent into Wellington and headwinds going in so we have some interesting patterns okay well we have our flight plan so now let's start and have a look at Navigraph and build our route there Well, here we are in Navigraph. So let's put our charts into place, shall we? Here we've got the South Island and here's the North Island. 
So we click on flights, do new flight from SimBrief and use the one that we just put in. And there's the route. So let's bring in now our plates that we're going to need for our route and put them at the bottom. So right click on that, left click on open the charts and there's arrival procedures, airport and airport information. So there's the airport. Here are the parking stands and parking stand coordinates. So those three are now in the bottom. We're using runway two and this is going to be our chart for departure. And here's the departure chart. So I'm going to add that to the bottom as well. Over here, I'm going to go and open the charts list for Wellington. And we want airport info. We want parking stands and coordinates. We also want the approach chart for going in. And that's is the one so we will pin this to the bottom and we're going to be coming in on runway three four so let's see what we've got for runway three four we have ILS on three four which suits us because we are fairly simple and we'll pin this so here's the route Actually, we'll be coming in and joining Umaga at that waypoint, and then it's final, straight in. So let's put that in. So ILS runway three, and that's it. Close that, close that, close that, and there's our route. So this is what we'll be following as we make our approach to land in Wellington. All being well, well, we'll have to see what the winds are like. And here is our departure. Fairly easy departure route. We take off, it's going north. So we just go up here and follow it. Easy peasy. Right, we have our route, we're all set to go. Well, we'll see you in the cockpit. Hello, Melissa, there you are. Come on into the cockpit and have a seat right there in the jump seat behind us so that you can see everything that we do. We're here at Christchurch, we're at stand 22, and look at this. It says stand 22 and it gives the geographic coordinates right on the marker in front of us. Very useful that. So we only have to look at that and put that into our FMC. So we've got the fuel. Well, you're all wrapped up. You're bundled up. You've been outside, haven't you? Yes. You've kicked the tires. You washed the windows. And we have fuel. How much fuel do we have on? We have near six tons six tons of fuel to make the flight to Wellington. Do you think that we've got enough? How about we put that much fuel into your car? Do you think you'll make it? Ha! Perhaps. All right, well, here we go. Right, we turn on the batteries and here we go ahead and turn on the fuel pumps and then start the APU, the auxiliary power unit which of course is in the tail of the aircraft. The forward service hatch is open and the equipment, that's the, the electric stairs, they're down. So we have a bit of a draft in here at the moment until we can get the heat going. It is decidedly cloudy and looking very suspicious outside, but we should do all right. All right, the engine gas temperature has climbed up to its point and now it'll fall back 
and then when it does we're looking for this light to turn blue and then we can switch from battery power which is 25 volts at the moment to give us 115 and there it is and now we have 115 volts so now we can turn on the galley we can turn on the IRS to get our geographic location turn on the emergency exit lights no smoking fasten seat belts and let's see if we can get some champagne for our special guest Melissa they never come for us you know but maybe they'll come for you all right would you turn on the window heats left and right please window heats left right turn on and probes left and right probe left and right on. electrical hydraulic pumps left and right on and then apu bleed apu bleed on and then recirculating fans on and both and then pax medium uh, auto auto and auto and auto that's it now we have heat going into the cabin so everybody will come into some workplace which is nice and warm and they're already starting to get him on board so we need to get ourselves going here right now then let's see we've got all of this going it's all started so the next thing we need to do is we need to program the FMC so position we are at NZCH I don't know whether stand 22 will be in the database but let's try oh yeah look at that and it matches yes it matches so that's what we'll put in so there into temporary and then that into execute all right now we'll go weather and terrain on that now we go to our route we are starting out at november nz zulu. charlie hotel to november zulu whiskey n z w n where is w oh there's w and n and we are ryanair 186 RYR 186 so we go to the next page and let's put in our route and we are going direct to Greta so Greta is the first one G R E T A by the way have you ever flown on any of these points Melissa have you checked out these routes? Just something to look forward to. And then we're going to take the Yankee 393. So Yankee 393. And we go to Wards. So W-A-R-D-S. And that is it. So we activate and do that. Departure. Well, the flight plan said that we were going to be on runway 02, but let's check with the ATIS locally here first. Christchurch International Airport Information, Romeo 2238, Zulu, wind 04I at 10, visibility greater than 20 miles, sky condition, ceiling 600, overcast, temperature 9 dew point 9 altimeter 1013, landing and departing, runway 2 and runway 2 center. All aircraft read back hold short instructions, advise controller on initial contact you have, Romeo. Right, we are leaving on runway 2. And that means we will be using Gutbu 1P. So there it is, there's the Gutbu 1P. So we put that in. And we're departing, if we look at the chart, we're departing on the Greta line. So we put the Greta one in and then execute that. Go back to departures and arrivals. We're coming in on ILS runway 34. 
we'll be using the IGMO 2A, so IGMO 2A and the transition. Let's have a look and see what the transition will be. And it's the Omega transition. Execute that. So far so good. All right, let's go into legs and let's go and check the plan. Let's run through this and see if it works out. So there's departures, there's Greta, Luxford Wards, okay, Igmo joined that. And there's coming in, Nida, Jonah, and coming right into land on runway three, four. Well, 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 well. We have a good plan. So we are set on that. So the next thing we need to do now is put in our fix and our destination is NZWN and we want 4 miles, we want 10 miles and we want 30 miles. Now we go to the descent, go to the forecast, put in the three altitudes that we need to put the wind information in on and then the Q&H at our destination according to our reports is 1016 so what is our direction and speed at flight level 200 is 275 slash 7 275 slash 7 Enter. Two nine eight slash nine. Two nine eight slash nine. And two Enter. nine two slash nine. Two nine two slash nine. And check. Good. Execute that. Now we go into our route. Perform the initialization. What is our reserves and what is our trip and taxi? For the trip we have one nine three eight. And for reserve, we have 3297, so it's 3.3. Three. So altogether is 5. Altogether is 5235. Five. So we'll be 5.2. 5. 5.2. 5. Okay. And our reserves are 3.3. 3. 3.3. Dot 3.3. Three. Three dot three. Three dot three. I'm going to double click the zero fuel weight so it makes the calculation. We are cost index 6. Our cruise altitude today is actually going to be higher than what we thought. So we're going to be at 230. Our cruise wind is going to be... Is 285. 285. Slash 10. 10. 10. 10. Okay. Our transition altitude is... Is 130. Flight level 130. And that's got that in. So now we go to N1 limit. It's nine degrees. So go to takeoff, flaps five. Double click on the center of gravity. And then it says the trim should be 4.75. Right, we have the basic information that we need. So let's have a look at this. Now, We'll be departing runway 2, so our course is going to be 016. So let's put 016 in our course. Zero 016 in our course here. And would you put uh, 230 in the out in the air pressure, please? Line level 230. And our landing altitude is going to be 50 because we're only 37 feet above sea level at that point. So, and here we'll go to 230. Now let's check, oh, Mac is 146. 146. Now we'll check that. Green light green light we have a good light 
Now our frequency for the ILS DME is 109.9, so 109.9, we have that. The ATIS at our destination is 126.9, so we have that in place. And our minimums is 450. 450, so we'll put 450 in that. So that will call out the minimums when we get there. All right, we're looking good. So far, so good. Everything looking good there, first officer? Yes, everything is good. I check it here, I put it the brake. And to RTO. Right, now, in order to get to runway two, we're going to need to go back, have our tail to the left and our nose to the right. Yes. So, let's go into menu, FS actions, and to push back, to so turn nose to the right, that's going to be the one. We'll want, uh, I 90. think, probably 90 degrees. There's the tongue. Now, we haven't been given our clearance to taxi, but the weather conditions are such that they may not allow us BFR, so let's find out. So we want to go depart north, so let's ask them. Christchurch, ground, Ryanair 186, we're Tango, request taxi to the active, departure to the north. Ryanair 186, Christchurch, ground, airport is currently IFR, request denied. That's all right, we are going to ignore them. Because we're, we are Ryanair. We are Ryanair and resistance is futile. <laughs> okay, now, we're ready, let's contact the ground. Contact the ground. Comfort to ground. Go ahead. We've been cleared for pushback and start. They want the tail to our left. Roger that. Ready for pushback. Tail to the left. Release parking brake, please. Parking brake is released. Air conditioning off. We'll start engine number one today, so I'm switching to generator one. As soon as we start to move, I'll switch this on to the start, and then we'll look for the power. Brakes released, here we go. Here we go. Here go. So we're ready to go. Starting engine number one. Engine number one. Is the start starting. valve is open. The engine is climbing. We're looking good on this. We're coming up 15, 16. And 24. Uh, putting in the fuel. We'll look for 115 volts up here, but now we're looking to see that the N2 continues to climb. Engine gas temperature is making good progress. The low oil pressure light has gone off. We're looking good. And the engine should start in just a moment. Yes. We have engine yeah. start. And switching to engine number two, we have 115 volts on number one, switching to engine two. Now we're looking for this to climb. Start valve no, light is up. Oh, the kamikazes are out. They're out to get us. They're out to get Push us. Back, Parking brake Parking is set. set. And fuel's 24. We'll look for 115 volts up here from the generator on the right engine. Steering pin is pulled. Watch for the slip release pads on your right and in flight. Thank you. Roger, Dodger. And we're having a good start. Engine's looking good. Climb EGT is climbing nicely. Low pressure light has gone out. And we have engine ignition on number two. We have 115 volts. We are good. So I'm turning on the taxi lights, turning on the strobe and steady and anti-collision lights because we are in IFR conditions and we want to be certain to be seen. Now I'm going to switch 
from the APU generator to the main engines. If you'll turn on the air conditioning heating please and if you'll bring off the power to the APU and we turn off the APU we're now running on main engines and everything is looking good uh, flaps 5 please flaps 5 Captain ok now I can very quickly take off speed the most precaution is we're now 147 for that, so we're set to go. And I'm in position. Right, look left, look right. Look right, it's clear. Check. Now we're going to taxi to the active. And with a bit of luck, we won't have any more kamikazes or any other aircraft interfering with us. I close the window. Close the windows, okay. Everything is checked. And you have the checklist? Yes, I have it. Oh, okay. Let's go through the checklist. Before takeoff. And taxi. Auto brake. Is RTO. RTO. Speed brake level down. And we have a kamikaze that wants to play chicken Ground with us. Ground equipment is not clear. Always we have a kamikaze. Get out of the way. Look at him. Look at him. Melissa, 
Are you buckled up and ready? Okay, then here we go. I'm going to push the power forward to N1 speed. And it is good. I'm pushing the tow gun. And now we're going full power. And now I'm steering with my feet. Just like you would in a Cessna. We're rolling. Speed is climbing. V1. V1 rotate. V1 rotate. V2. V2. And we have positive climb. Gear yeah. up, please. Shut 
champagne and caviar is being served in the main cabin. So if you want to go and have a little glass and a little bit of uh, caviar with that posh uh, biscuits that they serve, go ahead and I'll make sure you're in the cabin for our approach into Wellington and all of those interesting winds that you spoke of. Okay? See you there.
because when we slowed up and then we switched from standard to Q and H, that made a difference. On our route, we're either above it or below it, and we were a little above it, so now we're coming back onto it. And there's the North Island up ahead. And now we make a right turn. We make a right turn. At Igmo. We're giving ourselves plenty of room to land here. Yeah, there are out there somewhere. 
sign. Seatbelt signs on check. Recall. Recall is check. Auto With brake. Auto brake is set for number three. And approach briefing complete. Correct. When we turn on to final, then we'll do our uh, approach. And there's the runway over on our left. You see it over there, that little spit of land? Yeah, I see even some buildings there. Yeah, that's where we're going to be landing. We'll be making a left turn here in just a moment, so we'll need to put this onto 341 for our final approach setting.
40, 100, check. 22 because that's what the previous uh, airline did. Ah, there's some traffic up ahead. Wellington Tower, World Travel 
three. And stop. The parking brake is on. Engines off, please. Engines off. Engines off. Lights off. Continuous. Collision off. Okay, your damper is off. Galley is off. Okay, it's stairs and. Orbit 7603 contact. Line to departure 1.1 minor point 3. And we can turn all of those three off, and that works. Okay. Okay, cleanup is all complete. People are getting out, and the engines are spooling down. All right, now, fuel off, APU off, and the battery off. Shutdown is complete. Right, Melissa, how do you think we did? Did we do all right? I decided to make a long final under my control. <laughs> Sometimes that's a foolhardy decision with a big 60-ton aeroplane, but we made it. We came in, we landed, and here we are in Wellington. And at Stand 22, exactly the same one that the Jetstar used on the previous flight. Yes, there were some interesting winds. There was some turbulence over the water on the approach. So I can see what you mean about the winds. And, uh, but we stayed on top. I hope that we met your standards and that we did all right. Thank you for giving us the suggestion. And I wish you well with your private license and your remote license. That's going to be interesting. I wish you well with that. I really do. Welcome to the club called pilots. And for the rest of you, we will see you on the next flight of Ryanair 186. Bye.